Hey everyone, in the news this week. It's only a month to go until the King Charles banknotes enter circulation and a lot of people are getting excited. Personally, I don't get the excitement as most £50 notes have had traces of Charlie on them for years. There's also the case of the Dine and Dash couple who attended their first day of court. It's a pretty open and shut case, although they might get off on the technicality that going by how fat they are, they couldn't credibly have dashed anywhere. And it was Eurovision this week, and many were surprised that the Israeli entry wasn't a cover of the 1969 hit Boom Bang A Bang. I saw someone online saying that they'd rather have had a Palestinian entry in the competition this year, so I pointed out that it wasn't a great idea given Hamas's recent track record when it came to music festivals. Talk about Israel-Palestine, though, the focus of that conflict there recently moved to US university campuses where the last week or two have seen a number of angry student protests in the news. One of the more high-profile examples was at Columbia, where students decided to occupy part of the campus, vandalising it and demanding an immediate end to the war, which is quite strange given that the university hasn't fired a single shot in the conflict, nor is it involved with US arms exports. You may as well protest the war by refusing to, I don't know, eat toast unless it's cut into triangles. It is of course worth noting that, as usual, this is another story that's blown somewhat out of proportion by the media. The anarchy depicted on the 24-hour rolling news is actually only about 2,300 students out of 15 million college kids in America, and about half of them turned out to not even be students. Perhaps it's a DEI thing, though the angry people with too much time in their hands self-identify as students, as well as gender. And of course it all makes about as much sense as if I self-identified as a bus. At least that would make more sense, you know, I could use the empty lane on the motorway when I drove to work without worrying about getting a fine in the mail. On the other hand, these protests are quite humorous in places. There's compilations of graffiti where they've misspelled the word Palestine and are dressed up in costumes demanding colleges provide, quote, humanitarian aid because they're all a little bit hungry. There was even an alleged hunger strike in New York where three students hadn't eaten anything for six hours oof, and were thus already demanding medical oversight, trauma counselling and threatening to sue the university. You know, I could make a comparison to the Indian or Irish hunger strikes and the genuine struggle those people went through, although it's a bit depressing and I'm getting on a bit here, so let's end with a joke. What's the difference between Alice in Wonderland and Bobby Sands? The answer is that Alice got out of the maze. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.